Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to be taking a look at compositing in general. Now, technically everything we've done so far can be considered compositing, but this is going to be more the crux of it as we take all of the elements we've created so far and combine them together and even make another element and mix it in to create a final image that we can export and use. I should mention that when I'm referring to things we've created in the past, I'm talking about other videos in the series that this video is a part of. So the link will be in the description for the full playlist if you're new here and you want to check those out as well. So the first thing we're going to do is make a text element that we can work with. Then we're going to apply the corner pin we made earlier to make the text sit into the shot. And then we're going to use the text element itself to integrate it into the shot. And then we're going to bring the paint that we've done as well and put that in so that we have a final image ready to go. Okay, let's get started. So here in Natron we have our plate that we've been working with. I'm just going to pause it and go to frame 9, which is the reference frame from the corner pin we set earlier. And I'm going to make a text node. So in this text node I'm going to be super creative and just type books. I'm going to make it all capitals as well. Cool. So if I look at the text node, we can see quite a small font of the word books. I'm just going to scale this way up. I'm going to change the style to bold, the weight to ultra heavy, so to get this really nice thick text going here. And even though I've taken the size slider all the way to its highest, I can actually put a higher number into this field and make it even bigger. And position it like that, maybe 650. There we go, I think something like that. And so I'm going to merge this over just to see what we get. Maybe make it 600. There we go. Cool. So now I want to get this text to actually interact with the camera movement of the plate and kind of be a bit more integrated than to just plastered over the top. We could do this in any uh, video editing software, so let's get a bit more sophisticated. So. If you remember earlier in the series we made a corner pin, so I'm just going to go up and grab that now, which is over here. I'm going to drag this down. And so this was the corner pin that we created here. As you can see, this is just a one frame of roto and the corner pin is tracking it into the plate. So if we take a copy of this corner pin and we apply it to our text, Plug it in like that, and now we watch this. We can see we've applied the camera motion to the text, and it's kind of sticking pretty well to this front face of books here. And it's kind of still looking a little bit plastered over the top, so we're actually going to go to the middle frame and make sure that uh, this is the frame when it's kind of lined up. You can see it's kind of a bit skewed. I might just rotate, whoops, rotate a little bit to kind of straighten it up. There we go. Play that now a little bit better. Cool. I'm also just going to try and pull it away from the um, bookshelf a little bit to kind of make it give it a bit more depth. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to cheat that by just scaling it up a little bit. And so because I'm scaling it up after the camera move, it's kind of going to exaggerate the track, which would usually break it. But in this case, hopefully it will just kind of pull it off the shelf a little bit. So just a slight scale up, I think, is, is all we can get away with here. There we go. Cool. So I'm also just going to make it as if this, this book layer is casting a shadow on the books itself. So what I'm going to do is make a grade node above the merge right in here and I'm going to plug this mask into the transform. I'm going to give myself a little bit more space. So what I'm doing right now is I'm using the elements that I have available to me to drive the integration themselves. So I'm going to make a transform and I'm just going to scale. If I look at this transform node, I'm just going to move it over and down, a little to the left and a little down. And then I'm going to look at the grade node and I'm just going to grade through the mask of the text. So if I just multiply this down now, you can see the books are showing up like that. So I'm just going to do it just a little bit. 
And then if I look at this merge, you can kind of see it's casting a shadow onto the plane. So just going to uh, soften the shadow as if it's not such a hard light. It's kind of, if you look at the shadow and the plate down here, you can see it's quite a soft shadow. There's nothing too obvious. I guess there's a slightly harder shadow from the light, but it's okay. We're going to soften it anyway. Just kind of like that. So it's a little more subtle. And we're also getting uh, a shadow on the back wall here and, and on this wall here. This uh, white wall is actually 30 centimeters or so behind the element. So I'm just going to use this roto shape uh, that we made to test with. It uh, looks like that. And then because it has the corner pin plugged into it, it actually tracks with the plate. And I'm just going to mask um, this shape, which is what we're using to grade through. So the grade is plugged into this. And I'm just going to mask it by this roto shape. So I'm going to plug it into the merge node. Let me tidy this up so it's a little more clear. It's getting quite messy, which is um, unfortunate. So what we have here, I'm just going to create a dot by holding control and these little yellow points show up. If I click on them, it creates a dot. I'm going to grab my dot and tidy up the script a little bit. Make another one here. There we go. Okay. So what we've been doing is grading the plate through this mask. And I'm just going to isolate this mask using a mask, a lot of masks. And I'm also just going to soften this shape as well, just a little bit. So now when I grade it, instead of affecting this deeper background and the wall over here, it's just going to affect the books. In fact, I could extend it out here by just tweaking the rotor shape on the frame where the keyframe is, which is the blue frame here, as we learned earlier. And I'm just going to drag that over to include that line there. So now if I enable that, yeah, we're keeping it there. Cool. And now if I look at the merge, I just toggle that on and off. It's kind of casting a shadow uh, right above the surface that it's sitting on. So I play this through now. We've kind of just integrated it a little bit into the plate, giving it a little subtle layer um, that goes a long way for believability. Obviously, this isn't a real element. It's clearly um, computer generated, but uh, its integration is a bit more believable. Cool. So our books element is looking nicely integrated. As you can see, the bounding box is extending a little further than it needs to. So I'm going to go into the merge node and change the bounding box to B so that we maintain the bounding box of the plate, which is all we need. And we've got our markers here and here, and we've already painted them out earlier. So I'm going to integrate that paintwork into this comp right here. And all I need to do is just plug it in. Basically, we've got our plate up here. We've got our paint we made earlier. I'm just going to look at it to check it works. Sometimes when you open up a script, the rotor paint node needs a little wake up and to do that I all I did was um, toggle a layer on and off and the node just came back to life. So now all I need to do is take our comp of the text element and instead of reading the plate in I'm just going to plug the paint in, look at the bottom of the comp and as soon as it draws the top part of the frame good to go. So we've got our element and we've got our paint done all in the same script and our bounding box is good and we haven't introduced any other channels so this is good to render out if i just play it in the viewer and so now i've just cached the comp in the viewer and i'm playing it through and you can see that the markers are removed the elements in there the shadows is working everything we needed to do is done and this comp is ready to render out and use so a couple of things i'll just point out with this script um, Tidiness is very important, especially when you're learning how to use the software. So as you can see, aside from these green lines, which are expression links, I don't have any pipes crossing over one another. I should delete um, unconnected nodes like this that aren't needed. And uh, this here, like this plate and this plate are the same node. So it would be better if I, uh, if I just pause this, it'd be better if I moved this tracker node up here and connected it like that and deleted this instance of the node because we don't actually need it. This grade node was just a 
for demonstration purposes and debugging purposes. So if I put this out here like that, move it up, we can clearly see we have our plate and then we have a tracker node which is obviously important because it's connecting to all these other things. We have our paint here and then we have our element here and some integration. So as you can see the comp is very easy to understand just from a, a overview looking at it. You've got your plate at the top, a track that's obviously important for multiple elements. Um, you've got an over here and over here and over here and some integration here. It's very easy to understand and very straightforward. Obviously scripts get much bigger than this and much more complicated, but every part of the script can be this simply laid out and easy to understand. And I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to keep your scripts tidy and understandable, um, especially when you get into a professional scene and you're working with other people because other people might have to reference your work and you'll have to reference other people's work. And if you can't understand their scripts, it's really frustrating. So definitely make a huge effort to keep working tidily so there you go, there was a quick demonstration of basic compositing techniques, combining different setups and elements together to create a final result, which is basically what compositing is. Um, so I hope you enjoyed, I hope it was beneficial, and in the next video we'll be looking at the right node. Stick around for that, thank you very much, and I'll see you then.